Hello, I thought I'd talk today about consciousness. Now, I'm not an expert on consciousness, um, but I've read books about it over the years and websites and stuff. Um, and I thought, well, it's just something interesting to talk about, really. Um, I think one of the most interesting things about it is how unknown it is. Um, I mean, science has had tremendous explanatory power in um, trying to figure out how the world works and the wonders of modern science are incredible from the computer to some medicines that actually work to um, just machines that can dig out mountains and, and you know do all sorts of things for us um, but when we look at consciousness we're looking at an area where science has made very little progress and philosophy has made very little progress either our fundamental understanding of it is probably lacking in some very important way. Uh, when we try and think of consciousness we get bogged down very quickly in apparent impossibilities. Um, <clears throat> what is consciousness first of all? Um, well that's a good question and a lot of people get quite confused about it. Um, and you will read slightly differing definitions if you read about the subject, but the, the point about it is it's a kind of an awareness that we have, or at least I know I have, I presume you have. <coughs> um, we can't prove that because we can't measure it. All we can measure is brain activity, which is not the same. Um, I'll come on to that in a bit, but fundamentally it's awareness of phenomena and awareness of our own thoughts as well. Um, I think the Buddhists are correct when they say that our thoughts are not ourselves, then our consciousness is something which is aware of our thoughts. So our thoughts and the colours we see, um, the sunlight in the sky, all this are things that we are aware of. They are not what we are, fundamentally. Um, so it's this phenomenal awareness, awareness of phenomena. I can look at the colour red and I see a specific sensation. Some people who have red, green, or red other colour blindness don't see that at all. They see a different type of thing. They don't know what red looks like, uh, except it looks a certain way to them. I presume it looks a shade of grey or something, or something like that to them. I don't know. Um, and indeed, what I think of as red and you think of as red may in fact be subjectively experienced differently by us. We just give it the same name we have no way of telling. Um, it's, it's a con it's a, consciousness is a phenomenon which appears to be wholly subjective. Um, I mean, think about the colour red. In objective scientific reality, that colour doesn't actually exist at all, and neither does any colour. All the colour red is, is photons, light particles if you like, light waves or wavicles <coughs> of a certain range of wavelengths and frequency. They have, those photons have certain properties, wavelength, frequency, speed, the speed of light, um, polarisation, Maybe there's some others, spin or something like that, maybe. Um, some quantum properties. 
no color. Um, it's not. It's not there. We synthesize a color somewhere in our systems, presumably. Um, the photon, this particle of energy, it's just an energy packet, reaches our eye, it has a specific kind of energy, um, wavelength, and it is detected by a specific set of molecules in our eye which sends an electrical signal to our brain which does some electrochemical processing on it, and rather than simply knowing, ah, we have spotted a molecule of this wavelength, we see a red flash. Okay, well, it's, it's an analog system, it's a subjective system. So, fine, but why do we perceive it in a conscious way at all? I mean, a computer with a camera on it can see this colour, but it's not conscious of it, as far as we know. We know very little about consciousness, but it's reasonable to suppose that our machines are nowhere near complex enough to generate it if it is something which is physically generated. And I'll come on to that. Um, I've got some notes down here, so I'm going to be checking them from time to time. Um, but basically, consciousness is our awareness of the phenomena in the world through our senses and the phenomena within our own mental states, basically. Our, phenomena of our own mental states to some degree. There are, there's a lot that goes on in our brains that we are not conscious of at all. Um, <clears throat> not just Freud's psychological unconscious, but there are purely mechanical, electrical things going on there that we don't deal with consciously at all. I mean, even if I'm, when I'm thinking of things to say, I have an intent, but I don't know how those words are generated that, to match the intent and explain to you whatever it is I'm thinking of. <clears throat> Um, <clears throat> I just have some kind of feeling, or which I'm calling an intent, to say something, and the words appear. How are they generated? I have no consciousness of that. They appear fully formed in my consciousness, and I say them. It's strange. Um, and this touches on the illusion of free will, or is it real or not? Another question. Closely related, probably. Um, in a sense, from the perspective of science, consciousness is about as close as we get to a paranormal phenomenon, um, because it is, I think, wholly unexplained, or almost wholly unexplained, by uh, current science and philosophy. Um, it's clearly there. It's clearly subjective in nature, but I suppose the fundamental question is how? <laughs> because I talked about how a photon of light reaches your eye and it gets into the brain, <clears throat> and this is all electrochemical activity basically once the photons reach your eye. The question of consciousness is how does electrochemical activity, a bunch of molecules and particles bouncing around, become an actual experience? Does that make sense? An experience is, is something subjective, like seeing a colour. But that is apparently generated in the brain from some molecules vibrating or some chemical reactions. But, you know, if you've been to school and done some chemistry, you've done some chemical reactions, okay, and some test tubes and stuff. Where's the awareness in that? Are those chemicals suddenly aware because something has happened? It doesn't make any sense, basically. Um, so science, as it stands at the moment, consciousness um, doesn't make any sense. Um, that's my view. Maybe the odd philosopher here and there would dispute it, but I think fundamentally it's very hard to understand. I mean, clearly, 
it would appear to have something to do with the brain in humans. <clears throat> um, people with brain damage appear to have different qualities of consciousness. Certainly they lose some of their functionality. Um, if you damage the area of the brain that manages speech, these people can no longer talk and it appears they can no longer think in words. Um, if you damage enough of the brain, <coughs> they lose all their abilities uh, and of course they die. Um, but there isn't proof from that, there's only inference that they lose their consciousness or that their consciousness changes in quality. Um, I mean you could say they're just as conscious when they've lost the ability to speak but they're just not conscious of, of words anymore because they're not there. Well, okay. It gets very confusing basically. But the, the fundamental point is how can a bunch of molecules or particles bouncing around feel anything? Because our brain is basically a lump of fat thinking. Okay. Um, omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids in here thinking. And not just thinking but actually aware of it. Which is slightly different. Being aware of thinking. Awareness is the question here. Um, and it, uh, thinking about brain damage as well, there are some um, questions, obviously, from the religious side as to whether awareness survives death. Um, there isn't, of course, any hard evidence that it does, of course. We, we have no way of detecting anything like that. We can't even detect consciousness while we're alive. We can only detect brain activity. Um, electrical and chemical stuff. Um, but there are some suggestive hearsay um, evidences, if you like. It's poor evidence hearsay, but people who've suffered near-death experiences, for example, <coughs> there's a lot of literature of people who've <coughs> nearly died and been revived and they have similar kinds of experiences. Now, like experiences of, of going down a tunnel and a light at the end of the tunnel and, and coming through to some nice place and then being told, oh, sorry, you've got to go back. Hop it. Um, now, this may be just what the brain does when it's shutting down. Or it may be something that is actually happening on some level. Can't prove it can't disprove it. But as science is our best explanatory tool, we probably have to stick with the scientific view that it's illusory, it's the brain shutting down and it does this kind of stuff as it runs out of oxygen. But as science expands and explores more, it may find other ways of examining these phenomena, including the, the phenomenon of consciousness itself. Um, so we can't close the door on these things entirely uh, but we just must bear in mind that we need to be rational about it and the only way to be sure of having right answers about things is to look at actual evidence facts hearsay is enough to make you question things but it's not strictly solid enough fact to build uh, much of a theory on um, even when there's a lot of hearsay evidence, people can be very, very mistaken. You need actual physical, scientific experiments of some sort, I think, to prove or disprove things. Or at least irrefutable logic. Um, and, okay, the question I was asking is how can molecules bouncing around uh, produce something which is entirely on a different level, i.e. awareness. Um, 
we have to bear in mind, as I've mentioned, that our science is based pretty much only on the uh, properties of the electron. Chemical reactions happen because of electrons uh, from different atoms interacting with each other. Um, all our computer science and all this stuff is electrons. Um, our It's based on electrons anyway. Um, our physical bodies, as far as we know, are composed primarily of atoms made of protons, neutrons and electrons. <clears throat> or if you dig down further, quarks and electrons. But there's a whole zoo of subatomic particles there and it may well be that there are other properties to be exploited by our science and which are already being exploited by our bodies. Um, it has been postulated that the brain uses gravitons because there are structures in there which are just the right size to interact with gravitons should they exist. Um, maybe we use Higgs particles in some way. I mean, it gives us mass, apparently, but now maybe it's got other properties that we could use in our technology. But still, no matter what particles you look at, on the face of it, there's no property that these particles could have that would allow them to produce a subjective experience. Ultimately, they're just bouncing off each other and exchanging quanta of information. And even if information is fundamental to the reality rather than the, the matter, how does a one or a zero result in an awareness. Doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Um, well, lots of scientists are talking about information as being fundamental. The philosopher David Chalmers talks about it a lot. And it has some bearing on the argument, I suppose, at least in trying to figure out what is the nature of this consciousness phenomena that we experience, or that we are, perhaps. But it doesn't really answer the question of how can it even be. Um, another interesting aspect of it is why do we have consciousness? On the face of it, an entirely <coughs> non-conscious being could do all of the things that we do. A lot of philosophers discuss what they call zombies, <coughs> which are postulated in, in, for their thought experiments. They are exactly like humans, except they don't have consciousness. Now, just to be a little picky, <clears throat> there are already beings that are exactly like humans and don't have consciousness. Uh, and they are dead humans, <laughs> right? Well, we presume they don't have consciousness. Um, actually, maybe cavemen did think that people retained their consciousness when they died. Um, and they just lived in the ground decomposing for millennia, stuck there. That's a strange but doubtful uh, idea. <clears throat> and many people believe that everything is conscious in some way, and it, we don't know whether that's false. Um, but if it's based on brain activity, then that's not, it, it is false. Um, because brains have brain activity and other things don't. Um, but the idea of these zombies is that they would be just like humans, but they and they're alive, but they don't have this consciousness. And on the face of it, there's, there's, consciousness doesn't do anything. So we're aware of our own thoughts, and we can also can be aware of a mental model of somebody else's behaviour. Like if somebody's talking to us, we can be thinking, ah, oh, that's, that's what they mean, that's what they're thinking. Okay. But on the face of it, You don't need to be aware of the mental model. You just have, have to have a mental model of them. And it just needs to work. So a sufficiently complex computer program could, apparently, just as easily 
note that what this person is saying, an expression on their face, means X, and I should respond with Y. Where does consciousness fit into this? It's been postulated that consciousness helps us model other people, and it, I guess it does, but it doesn't seem to be necessary. I mean, it may be it's a far more efficient way of doing it than computation, but there's no doubt that our brain is doing computation when you study it. I mean, it, it's parallel computation, it's, it's uh, neural network style um, learned conditioned response style of computation, mostly, but that's what it is. Um, so why the consciousness? Does it make it more efficient? Is it? Uh, will, we, will we discover one day that it's a shortcut of some sort that nature has developed? Um, don't know. As far as containing a representation of external objects is concerned, that in itself cannot be the basis of consciousness, surely, because the camera I am talking to at the moment contains within it a representation of me on its CCD sensor. Um, that's not a difficult thing to achieve. Um, and I, I'm not going to suggest that the camera is conscious or that it can do anything with, with this representation. Um, it's recording the data. My brain is picking up data and noting it and forgetting half of it, most of it probably, um, summarising it and presenting it to consciousness as a phenomena, which is, one supposes, in some way related to how the outer world, if it exists, really is. <coughs> but when you think it's just particles with different levels of energy coming at you, if, it, if they even exist at all, if it's not all some sort of weird illusion of what, I don't know, then it's very bizarre, <laughs> to say the least. Um, so, let's see what I've written here. Well, what could consciousness be? Is, is it... If it's a non-physical phenomenon, is it something you do with some spiritual purpose of life, for example, that, that all we seem to be is this awareness? As I've mentioned, our, our thoughts are in our consciousness. They're things we are aware of. A zombie would have the thoughts, but it wouldn't have the awareness of them. And on the face of it, it would still be able to answer questions and go and get a job and have ambitions and all the rest of it. It just wouldn't know it. It would be doing it in a mechanical way. And there are some people who you wonder, um, maybe some psychopaths or sociopaths or something like this, maybe there's something missing there. Mm, I don't know. Um... Perhaps consciousness isn't necessary. It's some sort of strange temporary phenomenon which has accidentally happened in nature and will disappear with time and evolution if it serves no adaptive purpose um, or if, ex if we exterminate ourselves um, or are exterminated. Um, if the only thing that is fundamentally real then is this awareness not the things we're aware of, but the awareness itself, then there's something serious to be discovered about the nature of the universe, let's put it that way. Um, but even if it isn't some fundamental thing in terms of why we are here, there's still a lot to be discovered because we don't have any handle on it at all, really. Um, molecules vibrating, we can measure the brain activity, we can't we can even say this brain activity is always associated with the sensation of red being experienced by the person. 
There's no actual mechanical connection between how this pattern of activity produces the subjective sensation of red. You could mirror that pattern of activity in a computer and we would not know whether the computer was experiencing red or not. So it's a big puzzle. Um, now, Daniel Dennett, the philosopher, has talked about in his book Consciousness Explained, suggests that this consciousness that we have is just what it feels like to be a zombie, <laughs> in effect. He says there's no such thing as, or if you like, there's no such physical phenomena as consciousness. It's just what it feels like to be a bunch of molecules like this. Um, <clears throat> And that we are really zombies and the consciousness is, is I suppose you could say, illusory. Um, but I think it's dodging the question, personally. You might want to read his book, it's quite interesting. But it, fundamentally he just says, well, this is what it feels like. Well, that doesn't answer the question of how does it arise and does it serve a purpose? Um, I mean, we can't really draw any conclusion about this, I think, other than... We don't know enough, and it's possible that we, it may be impossible for us to know enough. Um, there may be concepts required which are beyond our brain capacity or ability to, to think of, or our monkey minds, which are designed for, essentially for clambering about in trees and running about on the savannah and gossiping about the neighbours, are not really, our brains are not really suited to abstract, uh, abstract phenomena like this. Or to, to figuring it out. Um, but on the other hand, let's not be pessimistic. With this whole zoo of subatomic particles and forces and stuff, which we are barely exploiting with our current science and technology, there's clearly a, an awful lot to be discovered still. An enormous amount, in fact. Um, we are we are really just at the beginning. But in terms of objective versus subjective, we have approximately zero knowledge. Um, and what I suggest is enjoy the consciousness. Maybe focus on enlightenment, the awareness of what you are aware of, aware of if you like. Because that, if there is a purpose to life, and we are fundamentally just our consciousness and everything else is inputs to it, then we should focus on being, I think, on just being aware of what we're aware of, looking at reality um, and learning to distinguish between what we're seeing, what the illusions that come to us are, what the illusory thoughts we think are, versus the fact of our awareness itself. Maybe that's mumbo-jumbo. Science perhaps will tell us this may be something which is beyond the scope of science, ultimately. We don't know at this stage in our history. But it's certainly a strange and interesting phenomenon. Um, comments below, if you like. Bye for now.